welcome to this session today's topic of the discussion is uh, smith chart and microwave frequency band my name is ajit subhash suryanshu working as an assistant professor in Halchin institute of technology south africa so learning out outcome of the today's session is thus at the end of the stu session students will able to solve the problem based on the smith chart and second ob uh, outcome is student will able to differentiate uh, different frequency band or uh, micro frequency bands and its uh, or its spe spectrum and its application so before proceed further into the session uh, what the knowledge you require uh, for this uh, you should have a knowledge of basic equation and uh, characteristics of the transmission line that is a reflection impedance equation for and uh, it is for the smith chart and you should have a knowledge of the entire electromagnetic spectrum smith chart so what is mean by the smith chart smith chart is the plot of the reflection coefficient and the reflection coefficient is the complex number and uh, so this plot is uh, again overlaid with the normalized impedance or normalized admittance and all of these are plotted at on the same graph or on uh, or just the reflection coefficient and impedance sometimes and reflection coefficient and admit admittance sometimes so again i recall the for lossless transmission line uh, you will get the input impedance uh, this is the equation of the input impedance z in is equal to z0 this is the characteristics impedance this is the load impedance and this is a uh, this is tan beta l and beta is the propagation constant <coughs> so this is the input impedance of the lossless transmission line and from this equation we derive this uh, load impedance can be given by z0 1 plus gamma l 1 divided by 1 minus gamma l so solving this equation you will get the gamma l that is a reflection coefficient which is again a complex number zl minus z0 divided by zl plus z0 so again this equation uh, this is a uh, load impedance so normalizing means uh, we are dividing that impedance with the z0 that's we are calculating the quantity for per unit characteristics impedance so that is the meaning of the normalizing so after normalizing it, uh, when you divide it by the Z0, you'll get the 1 plus uh, gamma L divided by 1 minus gamma L. <coughs> and it is denoted by the small letter R plus or minus JX if plus for the uh, inductive load and, and minus is for the capacitive load. So this is uh, gamma L, ZL minus Z0. So when you take the Z0 common from the numerator and denominator, you'll get this equation ZL minus this equation again this is a complex number so this is uh, uh, this complex number can be represented in the rectangular form and it is in the polar form this is the rectangular form the real and imaginary part and this is the magnitude and the phase part again this is a uh, equation of the circle uh, with r as uh, as you can see this is a radius so this is a radius one upon r plus one so r is the normalized resistance and this is the center center of your radius again solving for the reactance part that is x you will get this uh, this equation again this is a uh, equation of the circle and this is the equation of the circle with the center at one um, one divided by x and radius at the one divided by x so so this is the toil and uh, this gamma l also can be uh, called as a toil toil is equal to uh, real part gamma uh, gamma r and j plus gamma i so this if you represent it on the polar form as you can see this is a circle and uh, in last session we studied that reflection coefficient cannot be greater than one if its magnitude is always uh, less than one so this is this is actually the boundary of the reflection coefficient and uh, this is the real part and this is the imaginary part so this is again the equation of a constant resistance circle so these are the these are called as constant normalized resistance circles as you can see this uh, r is a small when you put r 
is equal to 5 in this equation and when you vary the r value that is normalized resistance you will get the different uh, circles having a different uh, radius and centers so as you can see in this equation for r is equal to 0 let's take this extreme case r is equal to 0 in that case the circle is a unit circle so this is outer circle is the unit circle and uh, for r is equal to infinity you will get the point you will not get the circle in this equation and when you put r is equal to infinity in this equation again for uh, reactance part uh, this uh, these are the circles having this center and uh, radius is equal to 1 by x when you plot it you will get the uh, again this consider these two extreme cases when x is equal to 0 in that case you will get the uh, radius is infinity you will get the uh, straight line here straight line passing through this uh, this center as you can see this uh, as a diameter of this circle unit circle and this is uh, again take this case of the x is equal to infinity again it is a point it is not a circle so for x is equal to uh, 1 you will get the circle so this is circle have a uh, center point at 1 for uh, 1 comma 1 as you can see 1 comma 1 and a radius is 1 so this circle will be a, a radius of so these are the smooth chart graph. When you combine this uh, normal resistance, uh, normalized resistance and normalized reactance uh, in a unit circle of re uh, as a reflection coefficient cannot be a cannot be greater than one. It is always less than or equal to at max it is a one for the uh, complete reflection. So when you combine this, you will get uh, something like this: the uh, smith chart. So in this smith chart, you can observe this is a real real axis and this is the imaginary axis of the reflection coefficient and these are the black lines are for the constant resistance and red lines are for the constant again this is a problem uh, for, for solving this reflection coefficient uh, as you can see this is for the for this load uh, and characteristic impedance 50 ohm so this uh, blue line is uh, indicating the magnitude and this uh, orange line actually orange orange is giving the phase so this is a complex number again so as you can see when he normalized it we will get the r is equal to 1 x is equal to 1 r is equal to 1 is this circle this black circle and x is equal to 1 this red circle so point of interaction point of interaction between these two is this one as you can see here so can you uh, reverse that process the in that if the <coughs> impedance of the transmission line is given and you can uh, find out the uh, reflection coefficient or reflection coefficient is given you have to find out the impedance of the transmission line if yes write down that procedure so i already discussed that procedure for uh, finding the uh, reflection coefficient if the impedance is given so you have to just reverse the process and write down your procedure to find out the uh, impedance from the smith chart so this is a electromagnetic spectrum as you can see this is a visible spectrum it is entire spectrum for, from the gamma waves from the lower frequency so starting with the electromagnetic waves and these are the uh, microwave band as you can see so these are the lower frequency band and these are the higher frequency band and in between infrared and ultraviolet the violet there is a visible spectrum as you can see and the temperature is also increases with the increase in the frequency you can see this in this so microwave so what is mean by the micro microwave is the band uh, ranging from the th 1300 uh, 300 megahertz to uh, 300 gigahertz uh, where, which corresponds to wavelength one meter to one millimeter so microwave tra transmit uh, transmit in the line of sight or it is uh, always travels in the straight line path and it is affected significantly by the moisture in the atmosphere and it is reflected by the metal surface and partial transmission in the dielectrics which are not metals so that's why the microwave communication is limited to the 48 to 64 kilometer that is uh, that is visual horizon or a line of sight communication so these are the different uh, microwave band as i've uh, told you the uh, the range of the microwave band is from the 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz so in this range these are the different bands are you can see l band to the d band f band 
so different uh, band have a different uh, application and its uses and uh, these are the l band have a as you can see this is military tel uh, military purpose it is used for the military telemetry purposes and uh, gps and mobile phones so this l band is used for the mobile phone as you can see and as we also the f band can be used uh, here for the wireless lan so f band have a higher frequency and d as you can see in this band uh, different band d band have a highest uh, microwave frequency as compared to the l band so each have a different application and uses so microwave has apps uh, so what are the uh, how it is affecting on the microwaves so microwave affecting the two ways uh, uh, it is first way is the non thermal and thermal so non thermal way it is very difficult to find out but thermal can be find out with the cell phone radiation effect so by observing the thermal image you can see this uh, this is a normal uh, thermographic image as you can see without a cell phone and this green light is a cooler areas and uh, yellow one is the higher uh, bit temperature but after using a 15 minutes of the cell phone talking on the cell phone as you can see this become a red so it get heated so it has a detrimental effect on the health so these are the one of the aspects of the affecting how the microwave is affecting our on our health these are the references thank you